Hey everybody, it's your good buddy 650 Eve here. Welcome to another episode of the New Bike Build Series. This is where we're taking the 2018 BMW S1000 RR Motorsport Color with the premium package that I purchased here from my good friends at Sills BMW. We're adding some amazing, custom, awesome parts to this motorcycle supplied to us by our great channel sponsors. And then at the end of the build series, we make the bike available for everyone viewing this video. Information on how you can win this bike is in the description. But on today's video, we're going to install some amazing blue crash protection parts, a Rizoma front sprocket cover, and some TWM brake and clutch levers. It's going to be amazing. This is all leading up to me taking the bike to Ducati, Detroit to have Bryn Tuning remote dyno tune the motorcycle for E85 and for 93 pump fuel. That's going to happen real soon. But for right now, I'm going to go inside. We're going to check out Zach as he installs these parts on this amazing machine. How's it going, everyone? Hey, hey, Zach. Just checking out the details on some of the parts that we're going to install today. Okay. Uh, nothing too exciting. Pretty much just some little engine protection pieces, which might save you in a slight tip over from mm -hmm. cracking an engine case or something. Okay. Uh, the gas cap, which just looks nice. It really is a piece of art, and it's also used on the HP4 race, so it's got to be good, right? Oh, heck yeah, man. It's by some top racing teams. It's lighter than the stock one. Yep. Uh, we got a water pump cover. Never really had an issue with that before, but I guess it's kind of low. It can yeah. hit the ground, so. Sure. That, and we're going to get rid of the stock levers. Finally. People have been asking you to do that forever. <laughs> and uh, we got a sprocket cover. Ooh, I love that. I have that on the HP4. It's great. Yeah. Opens that area up, gives it a little shininess, mm -hmm. and some valve stem caps, which I think we'll have you install, right? Yeah, yeah. Because we didn't get to those last time. I could do that. Something for me to do for once. Last time we got the seat covers on. Mm -hmm. They're still looking good. No, uh, no wrinkles in them or anything. Yeah. I went ahead and put the tape oh, protector on. Oh, look at that. On. It's nice, Zach. Good job, man. Of course, walking the park for you, I would have had it all crooked. That looks awesome. Yeah, it came out good. I was contemplating cutting it and making it shorter, but I liked it. Yeah. The full version. So put that on to prevent some scratches. So I don't know, let's get going. Let's start with the gas cap. I think we've shown this before. Yes, we have. Uh, pop it on anyway. We'll at least get the before and after look. Yep. So here it is before and after. Okay. And easy is just unbolting the silver cap, bolting the new piece on. You reuse the rubber gasket around it. It operates by pushing down, twisting. After you do it a couple times, it becomes real natural. Mm -hmm. Get the gas pump in there. Stickers on it, you can either leave it or it peels right off, but you can see it's it's machined out of a piece of billet. And then mm -hmm. we got the pro tie blue bolts just to accent it even more. Oh, heck yeah, man. It looks great, Zach. Um, while we got the bike down, I guess we'll go ahead and put the TW on levers on next. Okay. Got our brake lever on uses the factory mounting bolt. It comes with a new little piece that pushes on the master cylinder. You need to use the supplied one, the factory one's too long. Okay. But uh, you can see Manny already hooked us up with the blue tie oh, fastener sure on there, put it in, installed <laughs> and everything. I don't think the lever comes that way. Yeah. I imagine he popped it in. Uh, easy to adjust, just turn this knob, you can watch the lever moving back closer oh, to the yeah. bar. Moving back farther away. So you can adjust it for your hand size. Mm -hmm. Has a good feel to it will fold if it happens to hit the ground. Looks like we might have to adjust our uh, brake lever guard up just a hair to block that lever a little more, don't you think? Yeah, I think so. Easy enough yep. to adjust. We'll just have to get a Allen head on that. And move over to the clutch side next. Okay. So something you want to note while you're changing your levers, any brand of lever that you use, with the BMW it has two clutch switches, one for when you need to start the bike in gear and one for cruise control. So the little piece that actuates the switch is kind of weird looking. You need to make sure that you get it orientated the same way on the new lever. So you'll have to take it off your old lever and install it on the new lever. There should be flats that'll help you get it close. Okay. And then uh, last time we did these levers, I had to push out this bushing. This time it looks like they supplied a bushing and it fits inside the bolt. So we should be good to go on that aspect of it. Sweet. I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and switch these over and then we'll double check its function when we're done. Got the cable route in our lever, lever, just installing the factory bolt back in. And you'll have to readjust your clutch free play because it's easier to get the cable out if you add a lot of free play in. Sometimes it just gets caught on the 
little tail. So it works best if you keep a little pressure. Whenever that's, whenever this gap comes around, it catches on the little locking tab. Yeah. So as you get close, if you push down on it, it usually lets you roll right on by. And then BMW runs a really tight clutch lever. It actually gains more free play as uh, the engine gets warm. So it starts off with only about a millimeter, so you want to set a millimeter gap for free play. She's right about there. And then uh, we'll have to double check our clutch switch action. Um, we can do that by putting the bike in gear. There we go, we got first gear. So you can see it won't start because it's in gear. Yes. Pull the clutch in. As for the cruise control function, we'll have to take it out for a test ride. Yep. Just set cruise, make sure that it sets what your cruise would not set. That would be the problem you'd have because it's not pushing on the switch. And if that's the case, you just need to make an adjustment to that little plastic piece. Okay. I'm just gonna grab a torque wrench and we'll torque both those levers down. All right, we got the bike up in the air. If you wanna come over to this side then, we'll fit the water pump guard next. See, this is made by Four Racing, the same people that we have uh, the steering stem nut. What else we got from Chain Ford adjusters? Racing. Yeah, the chain adjusters. So same blue as that for sure. And this piece is gonna sit right here. Oh, cool, man. And just go over top of that. So we're supposed to be able to just remove these two bolts and install the bolts that it comes with, which are a little bit longer. They don't look quite as nice, but... And then I think we're supposed to put the washers behind. Comes with some instructions, nice and simple. Mm -hmm. Hopefully once we, when we pull these screws out, we don't lose any cool. Oh, see we're losing cool oh, yeah. already. Yeah. Hmm. So, just got a pan because it's just gonna drip coolant. We'll just have to tap it off when we're done. Only other thing I could think of would be maybe put the cooling system under a vacuum, but for time, we'll just try this. So, break it free and get those bolts out as fast as you can, I guess. Yeah. We're gonna lose a fair, fair amount of coolant. We'll get the new ones in. Seems to have slowed down a little bit. That's what I was that's gonna say. I didn't want to jinx it. <laughs> yeah. As it speeds back up. Longer bolt goes on the bottom. Don't forget the spacers behind it. Have your other socket ready because it's different. It's an Allen, not a Torx. Okay. Like the stock ones were. And get it snugged up. I don't believe they gave us a torque spec in the instructions. I'll double check. No, we have nothing, so we'll just snug them up. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, it does, man. It's going to look real good once we get the belly pan back on, too, because it's just going to be... Half of it will be peeking over, I think. Okay, so I'm going to need one for my HP4 now. <laughs> <laughs> we always talked about painting the water pump or something. We did, Remember? didn't we? Yep. Never, yep. Got to. Never got around to it, though. If you just take water, it'll get any coolant resi residue off. Just make sure that it doesn't look like we have a leak or anything. Lots of water. We'll use an air gun to blow okay. that off. And that's installed. Awesome. Not quite as smoothly as I would have liked, but hey. It wasn't too bad. I was expecting a geyser. It didn't happen. Yeah, I figured once we got both out, it was just going to start flowing. Right up next, we got some more jewelry protection pieces. Rizoma stuff. Rizoma makes really nice stuff. They do. Always high quality. Anodizing stays the correct color for a long time. They always put their instructions on the very bottom of the package, though. Yeah. If you're ever looking for Rizoma instructions. Take it all apart. They're usually real nice. Give you a torque spec. It tells us we need to put grease on the bolts. Um, tells us which three bolts to remove. Can't beat that. This does the timing cover side. This side's for the alternator or stator cover. Still get our uh, 
pitchfork specs and grease on them just like the other side. So first off we got to remove this stock bolt. See if we can get the plug. Yeah. Then we can safety wire it. This has holes pre drilled in it ready for safety wire, so nice. that's nice. Is there a blue plug we can get? Uh, Yeah, blue or even black for Zelma would look nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it'll be pre drilled for safety wire too, so you just have to run the wire. Really doesn't get much easier than that. No. Move over to the other side and fit this cover. You can see how it's cut to fit in here. Doesn't really fit any other way. So we're gonna need to remove these three screws here. These get set in a little bit more. I'm actually gonna grab a longer Allen socket so it doesn't scratch the blue. Perfect. There we go. Snug them up until they're touching. Move over to the torque wrench. It's the same torque spec as the other side. So we're gonna go with 10. Looks great. Good to go. Protect you from a little tip over. These covers are pretty fragile. Something could poke through it. This is nice and stiff. Might save you from leaking oil so we can at least make it home, you know? Oh, sure, man. Okay, our last piece of jewelry for the day. Yes. The Rizoma front sprocket cover. Well, it's not really much of a cover, but. <laughs> yeah. Sure it does look some, nice. It routes some wires around and it looks much nicer than what's on there. Yeah. It comes with a couple of spacers and the cover itself. Which is really stuck in there. This is where our wires are going to go. Mm -hmm. We can zip time on either side, so that's nice. And it should give us four bolts. Yep. Four nice looking eight millimeter bolts. We're going to keep the original case saver, which is the metal piece around it. I'll show you what that is in a minute. And two of these bolts with these collars hold that on. The other two hold the piece on. Um, let's go over, take off the stock one. If you don't like to get dirty, you're going to want to put some gloves on because this thing is usually yeah. nasty sticky. The other thing we have to do is get our shift rod out of the way. So you're going to need to pull down the rubber boot here. Pull it down. Exposes the fastener. It's just a T30. It does have Loctite on it. It is pretty tight. It's really shallow too. So you want to make sure you have a really good bite on it so you don't slip and scratch your bearing. Get that out of the way. Break these free. Of course, we already had all this apart because we had the engine out. Yes. Well, we like to do things over and over again, yes, right? Yes, yes. Like mm -hmm. Try to do it as many times as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make sure. did the chain and sprocket, too, which you had it all for. Yeah. Yeah, I did that at the same time as the engine. That, that was actually... Well planned? Uh, yeah. Yeah. See how greasy it is, and this is nothing. We only have 400 miles, and we cleaned off all uh, that grease yeah, originally. Yeah. Sometimes this is just packed, and it'll get all over it. So. Yeah. That's why I said, if you don't like to get dirty, pop some gloves on. Um, this is the case saver I was talking about. So if your chain does break and whip in, it should hit this piece of metal, and instead of going through your case, that should stop it. Oh, cool. Okay, so now we're ready to install the actual guard. Um, what you need to really be mindful of is this wire coming from the side stand switch. You don't want it getting into the chain and destroying itself. So double check our fitment there. That looks good. It's just going to come up and get zip tied on either side. It's easier to do this before you mount it. And where did I put those? Did they not make it over here? Guess not. Zip ties? Yeah, I hit. Oh, they're on the black bench here. How yeah. See? Camouflage. Mm hmm. If you get some real small zip ties. We can get them in here. And you'll just want to snug them up so that it can slide. We'll do a final tightening once it's all mounted. Okay. But it's kind of a pain to get them in there. After the fact. After the fact. Yeah. Pretty sure that's 10 newton meters also, but I'll look and double check. We'll set it at 10 for now. We'll pop over to the computer, we'll double check, but you can take a look at the finished, pro finished oh, yeah. product while I'm doing that. She's gorgeous, man. Yeah, maybe step back. I think that looks best from a little bit farther away. Indeed it does. All right, torque spec was actually eight newton meters, so we'll just break it free, back it down a little bit. Okay. 
Um, yeah, this is one of those parts that's kind of subtle. You don't really notice it all the time, but when you do, it, it looks a lot nicer than what was there. I agree. Okay, we're good. Put your rubber cover back on. And that job is finished. So the whole job for today is finished then, eh? Yeah, we got one more little part that you're going to pop on, right? Oh, yes, I Install forgot. some uh, special valve stuff. Oh, caps, you're so funny, Zach. Also okay. are so uh, <laughs> important, right? Yes. Do you want to go take them out of the package for us? There we go. These don't require any grease or <laughs> Newton meters or anything like that. But I'll uh, probably need your knife or something to get in this package. Eh? Nope. nope, nope, comes right away. Look at that. There we go. I did it without your knife. Still has some nice foam packaging. Yes. And we'll use this for the stock ones, but here they are. BMW. Aha. Yeah. Rondell so, and all. So hopefully. Yes, this We one. got lucky. It's yep. lined up. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I really didn't set it up like that on purpose, but I looked earlier. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> nice. This is going to set the bike off. We got lucky in the back too, Zach. Unbelievable. The back one I did set up for you. Oh, did you? Yeah, okay. let me get this water bottle out of the way. Blocking the important install. Yes, important install. Here we go. And we don't want to put these on too tight, right, Zach? Yeah. Okay. That way you can get them back off to add air. Mm -hmm. There. Excellent. There you go. That's great. Yep. I'm going to put these back in the cap like Zach does. Yep. Puts everything back nice and neat. As soon as he's done with it. Yeah, I can't wait to get that belly pan back on. It'll look super. Yeah, that's going to be in a couple days. All right, well, Zach's going to take the bike for a nice cruise and test the cruise control and have some fun. Are you going your long route or your short route, Zach? Uh, we'll just do a short route. Just make sure the cruise control is good. Okay. And, uh, we're not leaking any coolant. Be back about eight minutes. Okay, <laughs> eight minutes, all right. Give or take traffic situation. Yep. Let it warm up a little bit. I hear Zach's back. Nope. Probably should have put a license plate on. Oh yeah, dealer plate. <laughs> uh, how's the cruise control? Uh, cruise control is intermittent. We're gonna have to take a look. Okay. Make sure that it's depressing the one switch enough for the cruise control. Okay. Uh, I, it was kind of tricky on the last bike we did too. I think I wound up moving the switch a hair forward actually. Okay. It worked twice, but then the one time I went to use it, it didn't work. So we'll get that addressed and working. Okay. So what we need to do to address our clutch switch issue for cruise control is there's two switches under here, as I explained before. I don't know if, can you get the camera under here to show? Let's see. So these two metal tabs here are our clutch switches. Yeah, we see it. All right, so this one is for when the clutch is pulled in, so it knows that it can start the bike in gear. Mm -hmm. You'll hear it click first if you listen. Let's listen. Hear that? Yep. And then the second click is letting our cruise control know when we want the lever to come back, we hear another click. That lets the cruise control know that our clutch lever's out all the way. Sure. Because if you pull the clutch in, it shuts the cruise control off. Yeah. So you can't engage it. So what I actually had to do, this, see how it has this tent shape to it? It's bowed right here. There's a little bend. Yep. Hopefully you guys can see it. Yep. I just pushed right on the bend to make it a little bit flatter. And that gave us the second click that we weren't getting before. Yeah. Every time. It seems to be working. 
mm -hmm. every time now. So I'll take it back out real quick to verify. Put a dealer tag on this time. Yeah, that's a good idea. And hopefully that took care of our issue. Awesome. Well, we're going to assume that that did, unless we hear otherwise. Yeah. So uh, thanks again, Zach, for all your work. Next time, uh, next up, I'm going to be taking this thing to, to Ducati, Detroit, to have Bryn tuning, remote tune the thing. Cool. Can't and then I'll bring the it back. Numbers yeah. Numbers from that and ride it after that. It sounds really good right now. Yeah. It really does. So I can't wait. It'll probably be that much better. Wow. Awesome. Well, thanks, man. All right. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks for watching. Yep. Well, we've got the motorcycle loaded into the trailer, and our next stop... Ducati Detroit so that Bryn Tooney can remote tune it for pump fuel and for E85. You can still support the new bike build series. Information on how to do that is in the description. I want to thank you all so much for viewing the video. If you liked it, hit the like button. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking subscribe. I'm always going to have new videos uploaded to the channel. Stay tuned for more and as always, thanks for viewing. We'll catch you next time on the new bike build series.